Hello, and welcome to Steph Udall. I am, belatedly, Steph, and it's time for another Make It Work video. You may have noticed that I haven't posted a video in a month and a half. <laughs> I posted on the community tab, but in case you missed it, here's what happened. After putting out three videos in October, I was completely burnt out. I'm autistic, and sometimes I just don't realize that I've pushed myself too hard until it's too late. So I took it easy for a bit, mainly because I had to, but I was slowly working on this doll the whole time. So this Make It Work wasn't just about making the doll project come together, it was also about working around and with my own limitations. Now let's get to the doll, shall we? I've been wanting to customize one of the Snapstar dolls in my stock box for a while now. I wanted to see if I could make their face look a bit less... vacant? I guess? So I have Aspen here. But I'm going to use this Echo head I have floating around after stealing her body for Litwick last year, because she has green eyes. I saw Papa Atelier remove the paint from the face without damaging the eyes of a Snapstar before, and I wanted to see if I could do it. So I used a cotton swab and pure acetone and uh, nope, nope, I ruined the eyes. <laughs> you can't tell from this angle, but you'll see when I take them out of the head. How did Papa Natalia do it? She made it look so easy. I could steal Aspen's eyes, but I really want them to be green for this doll. So I guess we're making eyes again, friends. I heated the head up with a hairdryer and squeezed out the eyes. That sounds so awful out of context. And now you can see the damage. Thankfully, I have glass cabochons that are almost exactly the same size. Now that the eyes have been removed, I cut out a head cap and work on removing the extra vinyl behind the eye openings. I left a bit around the edge and the cabochons fit in there really well. During this face-up, I was in the middle of The Secret History by Donna Tartt. All of the characters are terrible people, but it was a really compelling listen. <laughs> As per usual, I gave the head two coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat before I started. I begin sketching everything out with a yellow ochre watercolor pencil and then build the colors up from there. I wanted to make the eyes look a bit larger and brighter, so I lined the bottom with white. I have blushing with chalk pastels to give the face more life and dimension. I really like adding strong blushing around the cheeks and temples and on the tips of the nose and ears. I keep going layer by layer, spraying another layer of MSC when I can't build any more color or I just want to save my progress. I completely forgot to mention, but I really wanted to make a Mori K doll this time. Mori K is slash was a Japanese street fashion style. Lots of layering, earth tones, and neutrals. As such, I'm going for a very simple, natural looking face up here. I add some sparkle with rose gold pearl X powder. It adds a nice dewy looking finish to the skin. 
and after two final coats of MSC, the face-up is done. The eyes took me at least three tries, each using a different technique, but eventually I landed on laying down base colors with alcohol markers on Bristol board, adding detail and refining the colors with watercolor pencils, and finishing off with Posca pens for the pupils and some gold highlights. Once the paint marker details are dry, I glued the cabochons on top. After the glue dried, I cut around them to remove the excess paper. I heated up the head with my hair dryer again to make the vinyl more pliable and stuck the eyes in. I probably should have done this before I put the eyes in, but I decided to coat the back of the eyes with Mod Podge. I don't know if I needed to, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. So I did it. <laughs> then I used my hair dryer again to heat up the head so I could put it back on the body. It was super hard! The vinyl that the head is made out of is really thick, and the neck opening was small, and it just did not want to go back on the neck peg. I ended up wrestling it back on off camera. Thankfully the eyes stayed in place. I probably should have put them in after I had the head back on, but I was impatient! I decided at this point to use hot glue to make sure the eyes stay in place, as I don't plan on changing them ever, and I didn't feel like mixing up such a tiny amount of epoxy sculpt. The vinyl was probably doing a good enough job on its own, but better safe than sorry. With that sorted, I glued the head cap back on using an all-purpose glue as my super glue had dried up. Ooh. It did the job well enough though. While that's drying, let's work on her boots. I want to repurpose Aspen's cowboy boots into these specific boots from Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> I cut the top of the boots off and trimmed them down until they're about the right height. I take a small amount of silk clay and mold them into long rectangles, long enough to fit around the top of the boot. I glue the clay on the boot and smooth the clay over the top of the boot, covering the cut edge. Then I let the clay cure overnight before painting. I start with a couple of layers of grey gesso to make everything the same color. Then I begin painting the boots with acrylic paint, mainly in Prussian blue, mixing in black and white to help create the shades I need. Then I seal in the paint with two coats of matte Mod Podge. Mod Podge remains flexible when it's dry, so I like using it on accessories that are made out of flexible materials, like these shoes. Back to the doll. I painted the scalp brown so I can glue on yarn wefts later. Then I realized I should have filled up the hole in the back of the head as I don't plan on using a snap star wig. Hot glue comes to the rescue again! Once dry, I trimmed it flush to the head and added a second layer of brown paint. You can really tell that I was struggling to pay attention to detail during this custom, can't you? <laughs> Executive function who? I don't know her. Then I begin gluing on the yarn wefts I made off camera. I start at the nape of the neck and make my way up and around the head. When I get to the part, I glue on a weft that will be flipped over once it's dried. 
I make sure it covers the top of the weft underneath so that no glue will be visible when I flip it over. Then I add a couple more wefts just to fill out the area. Once dry, I flip the part weft over to the other side and tape it down with washi tape. I also use the side of my flat iron to help coax it into laying flat and leave it taped down overnight. I suddenly remembered that I wanted to gloss her lips, so I went ahead and did that with some Vallejo gloss varnish before I forgot again. The next day, I removed the tape and combed out her hair. I decided not to cut it, and give her a long over-the-shoulder braid. To help everything lay down properly, I decided to braid underhand. I then took a page out of the Tome of Enchantarium and used thin wire to secure it rather than a rubber band. And it turned out really nice! Definitely using that technique again. Now I hope y'all forgive me. <laughs> but I made all of her clothes off camera. I wanted to just chill out and sew and knit in front of the TV watching YouTube videos that I've already seen before because it's comforting. I ended up improvising a lot and I had fun making them. I make these gray tights out of people-sized tights. And this dark navy turtleneck. I'll go ahead and put those on her now so I can get rid of the tape. <laughs> there we go. I made this double layered skirt for her. I was hesitant to add the lace at first as it's a slightly different shade of green than the fabric, but after looking at it a while I decided it was close enough and added some much needed texture. I also made this apron. Originally I wanted to use much more of this pattern fabric, but it turns out that it frays if you so much as breathe on it. But I think the green and the addition of the lace and bead faux buttons actually looks better than what I'd originally planned, so that worked out. I knew I wanted to knit some accessories for her, and I had the perfect yarn. This is hand dyed sock yarn in the Alchemist's Notebook colorway from Star Eater Yarns. The colors were absolutely perfect for this doll. I adopted human sized patterns for these, Offhand Lace by Caitlin French for the shawl, and Urchin by Isolde Teague for the hat. I'll leave links to the patterns in the description down below, as well as notes about what changes I made to make them on this scale. And of course, we have the shoes. All that's left now is to get her dressed, and she's done! Laurel was the first name I thought of for her, and it kind of stuck, so Laurel it is. I still think the proportions of Snapstar dolls are a bit off, but I really like how she turned out, and I think she's adorable as heck. <laughs> How do you think I did? Do you like Laurel? And if you could go off and live in the woods, would you? Let me know in the comments down below. I think as long as I had the necessary modern conveniences like a decent internet connection and I was able to visit civilization every so often, I'd be down. I like the woods. <laughs> I 
As always, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more from me, and click the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. You can also follow me over on Instagram at Stefudal. And until next time, which will be sooner than last time, bye!